and welcome back to part two of Wall Street Prep's uh, quick leverage buyout model. Okay, uh, we've already talked about our um, some select financial statement information, uh, our exit assumptions, and we built up just uh, an abbreviated income statement basically uh, at this point uh, as part one of our lesson. Of course, you can uh, download this Excel file at www.wallstreetprep.com. Let's build up our debt schedule. Okay. I'm going to just split my screen here so that we can see uh, different aspects of the same spreadsheet. So how much can this company actually borrow? Okay. Well, if you recall in our first video, we said we can borrow six times $2.4 billion. Company generated $2.4 billion in EBITDA, and we can borrow uh, six times that amount. Okay, so that's going to be our beginning debt balance. So $14.4 billion is the total amount of debt that we can take on as part of this transaction. Now, of course, the lenders want uh, our cash. Um, and as part of the, the loans that they're going to give us, uh, they're going to say that we must pay down a billion dollars of that debt balance every year. Just we're keeping it simple. We're assuming it's a billion dollars every year. Again, this would be negotiated uh, between the lenders and, of course, us, the financial sponsor. Now, a lot of debt, of course, uh, if you go and borrow from a bank, uh, you can always pay down extra Okay. So we have to pay down a billion dollars, um, but we can always pay down a little bit more. Okay. The bank, generally speaking, is not going to turn away our extra cash that we give them. And there's going to be limitations on, on what the company can do with its cash flows anyhow. Okay. And that's to prevent some aggressive PE firm from paying down just the minimal amount of debt each year and then cutting itself you know, a large dividend check. And then a few years later, if the LBO doesn't work out, hey, at least the PE firm made money. Well, we don't, banks don't want that to happen. Okay, so they're, they're going to put limitations on, on what we can do with any excess cash that we generate anyhow. But generally speaking, we're going to assume that any excess cash can be used to pay down debt. And the faster we pay down that debt, the quicker we pay down our debt, the greater our returns will be when we exit the business and realize those profits. So we'll build up our debt schedule and then we'll come back to the to the balance sheet. So for our optional pay down, okay, so we're generating cash flows throughout the year. Uh, again, in this case, in 2013, we just assume it's $528 million. We have cash on the balance sheet of $100 million. We, at the end of 2012, we acquire that cash. But we must Again, hold on to a certain uh, amount of cash just to save it for a rainy day and to meet you know, our current operating needs. And in video one, we assumed that that was $50 million. Okay. So I'm going to take out that $50 million, uh, but again, I'm going to add $100 million and the cash we generate in a year. Okay. And I'm just going to make that a negative because I want uh, pay downs to be negatives. And the way I, I make uh, change signs in my model. I, I like to multiply by negative one. That's all that's going on there. So again, we have 100 million on, on hand. We generate 528 million. And again, this, the assumption in our model is that that's the cash flows after we've already met this $1 billion required pay down. So this free cash flow after required debt pay down. So we can add those two together, but then we take out the minimum cash balance of $50 million. And again, I'm making it a, a negative for my roll forward schedule. So then all we have to do is simply get the beginning of period debt uh, less our two pay downs. And that's our ending balance for debt. Of course, for, uh, to complete our debt schedule, uh, previous year's ending balance is current year's beginning. And then I can also copy out this sum as well. Okay, so it just rolls forward like so. 
once we have our debt schedule complete, now we can come back up and calculate our cash as well as our ending debt balance. Ending debt balance is very similar, uh, very simple. We can just reference from, reference it from our debt schedule, copy it out to the right. That was the whole point of our debt schedule. This is our ending balance. Our balance sheet is uh, the end of whatever particular year we're in. Then for cash, again, beginning cash balance plus cash generated through the year, less cash being used during the year. Okay. Again, we're not going to get into a, a full-blown cash flow statement. Uh, we've got free cash flows after a required debt pay down, and we're going to pay down a little extra. I need to make that a positive, so I have a negative down here. Of course, it's not a coincidence that my ending cash balance is 50 million. That's the minimum uh, requirement I must have because we're using all of our excess cash, uh, generated whether it's generated during a year or whether we have a little extra uh, excess cash on hand. We're using all of it to pay down our debt. The faster we can pay down our debt, the greater uh, our future returns can be. So I just copied uh, that out as well. Uh, just kind of an abbreviated balance sheet, and of course our net debt is calculated uh, as such. It was already complete in there. Now for our third and final video, we're going to answer these six questions and, and talk about um, how PE firms analyze uh, whether an LBO will make sense or not. So stay tuned.